Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Vinyl Thoughts. Today, I'm coming to you again with another little bit of a mystery, a hidden gem uh, that's virtually unknown. So, let me bring you up to speed on, on, on a little thing that I like to do occasionally. Um, every once in a while, I do this thing where I go and I browse in what I refer to as the Island of Misfit albums. Albums that have just been cast away and nobody fucking cares about it anymore. So the way that I do this is I log on to my trusty Discogs account and I will filter what I'm looking for. Usually I'm filtering thrash metal because that's my cup of tea. I love that shit. And I will filter it to where it's listing them from the lowest price at the top, you know, down to the highest. So I'm looking at the cheapest shit on Discogs that's classified as thrash metal. And usually it's just because I, I, I don't know, a lot of times I feel like there are some albums that are unnecessarily cast aside for some unknown reason and usually it's completely unwarranted. So a lot of times I'll look through these albums and a lot of them I'll already know, but the ones that I don't, I'll take the artist name and the album title, and I'll plug it into the YouTubes and see if anyone's posted maybe the full album or a track or two to see if it's anything I'm interested in. 85% of the time, it's stuff where I'm like, all right, I get why this is $5, I'm, I'm done. Um, but the other 15% of the time, it ends up being something where I'm like, holy shit, why, why is this here for only five bucks? And I'll, I'll purchase it for myself. And today we're going to be talking about one of those albums. We're going to be talking about the one and only album from the band Guillotine. The album is called Bring Down the Curtain. So what we know about Guillotine, they were a crossover thrash band uh, from Santa Clarita, California, and this is their one and only album. There, there they are right there. They look, for the most part, like they're young pups out there making some fucking racket. And as you heard from the little sample there, um, you could easily fit this in the crossover thrash category. But the thing that I like about this particular album and albums like this is that there is a urgent, youthful naivete, if you will, that to me creates some of the most engaging and exciting music. Unfortunately, when you get older like me, it's harder to conjure up whatever combination of shit it is that makes music made by young people um, sometimes so exhilarating. talking about groups from back in the day uh, because there was a, a thing that seemed to happen with a lot of young groups where there really was no desire to fit squarely into any one genre or subgenre, which today seems like a, a priority for most bands. Like you have to do these exact things to fit into this category that you have chosen. But um, that's, that's what I like about Guillotine and this particular album is that there is thrash metal, there's punk, there's the crossover thing, uh, a little bit of post-punk in there, um, there's a tiny bit of technicality and a little bit of progression, but it's it also at the same time, it's a little bit sloppy and a little bit amateurish at times. It sounds like these were songs that had to come out of these kids whether they were ready to play them or not. <laughs> So 
yeah, I wasn't able to find any information on what happened with this band after this album or what any of the members are doing now. We have names. Um, on vocals is John Wilmers. On guitars is Ed Maple. On bass is Kiara Geller. And on drums is Kathy Morris. And that's literally all the information that we have. I, I searched around and even places on YouTube where they had posted songs or the full album, they still only knew where the band was from and what year this album came out. Um, that's it. I was, however, able to find a Discogs review from 2017 that I think in certain areas totally nailed what this album is. Weird rambly thrash with parts thrown against the wall to see what sticks. Clattery and loose with very little low end. Shouty 80s hardcore crossover vocals and some weird almost accidental technical guitar riffing. Kind of falls between the cracks of aggression, musicality, surf punk distraction, and speed thrash breathlessness. But it's got a charm to it. Kind of a mess of ramshackle glory. Rewarding for those willing to sit down and give it some attention. That cover art is a war crime though. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't agree completely with everything this person said. But for the most part that gives you an idea of what this album is. I think some people will listen to this album and all they'll be doing is picking out uh, the inconsistencies and the mistakes and the little bits that you could compare to other bands, totally missing what's so enjoyable about the album. If you're that kind of music listener, this album is absolutely not for you. Are there mistakes? Absolutely. fucking lutely Are these kids playing beyond their abilities? For the most part, yeah. But none of these things derail the songs or kill the momentum of this album. When I first got this album, I listened to it three times in a row because I was so like, man, this is really good. And it just hits that sweet spot. And I, I think that I spoke a little bit about this when I did a video on the first DRI album about uh, uh, there's a period of music with with hardcore and punk and thrash and all of the crossover things where it was so new and there was so much experimentation that the rules weren't set yet even in 1989 even though thrash had become a really big thing there were still a lot of areas of experimentation and young people for the most part were not afraid to do that shit whereas now you put out an album like this all of the rough edges are going to be smoothed out the little shifts here and there to sort of unexpected territories are going to be completely taken out because at the end of the day, a crossover thrash band has rules they have to play by now. Let's take a moment, though, to uh, talk about the war crime that is the cover art. So, um, yeah, judging on the cover, I would have thought that this was a piece of shit <laughs> because that is... Look, let's just... I, I, I mean, it's uh, unique, I guess... Um, we'll take a look at the whole record here. So there's there's the the guys and girl. Although there seem to be two female names, but uh, maybe it's a, a boy named Kiara. I, I don't really know. This is a thing uh, that comes up with the mystery of this band. Let's take a look at the uh, inside sleeve here. Um, we got some lyrics, which is cool. And lyrically, this album is a big old fuck the system. That kind of youthful, uh, we're not going to take it anymore. But it's it's not all over the place. It's very directed. It is young people who are pissed off about uh, bigotry and greed and injustice and intolerance. To be completely fair, it's an album that would fit in very well today. And honestly, that's a big reason why I'm like, we should be talking about this fucking album. Not only is it a lost gem that should get more respect, it's an album that has aged 
really fucking well subject matter wise. The music itself is of a time, but it's of a fucking great time. Um, so let's get back to the uh, other side of the inner sleeve. Some more amazing artwork. I mean, uh, no disrespect to whoever uh, drew these images, but um, it's not great. And uh, here's the record. It's on Alchemy Records, which um, when I looked it up, Alchemy Records didn't put out that many uh, things, but they did put out an album by Neurosis and an album by uh, the Melvins. Um, so yeah, there you go, guillotine. So uh, needless to say, um, I recommend going and finding this album somewhere. I'm gonna put a link down below to the YouTube video that I initially found to listen to this album. Um, I don't think it's on any streaming services. Uh, yeah, you may have to go on your Amazons or your Discogs to find a copy if this is really something that you would be into. And honestly, you should be. This is uh, the kind of crossover thrash punk that has an urgency that is all but missing in uh, modern metal for the most part. And so I, I just love listening to shit like this. To me, this is an album that would have been looked upon as a classic debut album if these guys had made a second album that really made a big splash. And from what I'm hearing on this particular album, they had it in them to fucking do it. So there's the mystery. Like, what happened with this band? Why is this the only album they put out? I realize that a lot of times the story is the same. You know, they didn't get along with each other or this album was kind of a failure and they, they felt discouraged and the band just sort of went their separate ways. Um, but that's, you know, all speculation. Who the fuck knows? If anybody out there knows anything about Guillotine or about this album, please post in below in the comments whatever you know because I really think this is an album that people should still be talking about. There's a whole lot of albums from this period of crossover thrash that still get mentioned today that are nowhere near as good as this album. So let's prop up this fucking album, folks. Guillotine, bring down the curtain, do it. All right, that's all I got for this edition of Vinyl Thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Um, comment down below, like and subscribe and share. And uh, most importantly, keep the conversations about these smaller unknown albums alive. If there are any that you really love, uh, let me know about them. I feel like this is the sort of shit that we should be talking about because we're only getting further and further away from these albums, folks. And eventually, nobody will ever talk about them again. So that's why I'm here. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all again very soon.